Hey everyone, my name is Ted Forbes and welcome back to another episode of The Art of Photography. And a couple episodes ago, I put a little feeler out there and I was asking you guys what you might like to see. Um, trying to do some new stuff with the show, trying to reinvent ourselves in some ways while maintaining the stuff that we've already done. And I wanna thank every one of you that responded. We had a lot of really good comments on this. I had a lot of good emails. So if you reached out via email, comment, tweet, Facebook, whatever, thank you very much. There were some really nice suggestions. And I'll go ahead and say that I don't wanna reveal too much right now, but in the next two weeks here, I'm gonna announce some things that we're gonna be doing coming up. I just don't want to put them out there too early before I've got my head around them. Um, but uh, I think we got some really cool stuff in the works. And also today for our subject, I wanted to address some issues because there were a lot of people who wanted to see stuff and had questions mainly on, you know, what it means to be a working photographer, or what it means to be a professional photographer. And I thought that might make a good subject for today's show. And we'll probably revisit this um, over a couple episodes. And because I think there's a lot to it. And I think it's really interesting. And I think we're in a particularly, sometimes I think it's weird, but it definitely is an interesting time um, in terms of what it means to do creative work professionally. And when I was a kid, I grew up, and I've said this before on the show, but um, you know, my dad was an illustrator. And that's what he did his entire career. And he basically made paintings for magazine covers, for advertising, uh, for corporate clients. He did portraits, he did all kinds of things. And by all means of the word, he was a professional illustrator. And you know, growing up as a kid in the 70s and 80s, of course, you know, being my dad, I looked up to him. And I really was always enamored by the fact that my dad did something very unusual for a career. But I also knew, you know, we, my parents had friends that were other illustrators. We knew photographers, um, people I know to this day. And I think in the 70s and 80s, when you said you were a professional photographer and it was a very viable source of income, usually what that meant is you were in some line of work where you shot product photography, you did annual reports, maybe there was a lot of travel involved, sometimes it was celebrity portraits. There were a lot of different things that were very viable in terms of photography at that time, particularly in the advertising industry. And when I grew up, that's what I associated as being a professional photographer. And it's really interesting because I think we've seen a big turn about this, probably starting in the late 90s into the tech boom. And the way the world has changed and what that means to us as professionals, so to speak. And nowadays, you know, due to the rise of stock photography, and I don't think this is a bad thing, it's just kind of a weird thing, that a lot of, you know, it, there's so much imagery out there. I mean, you could also make the argument that digital cameras are so easy to get that a lot of people don't hire a professional for certain things anymore, or maybe they want to do it themselves, or there maybe there's more photographers, there's more competition. There's a lot of reasons to this, but I really think that the industry has changed a lot. I still think it can be done. I still think you can make your living as a photographer, um, definitely part-time, if not full-time. It's just changed and trying to figure out how to make that work. Um, it's kind of you know the premise for all this. Now I do another podcast called The Photography Show that I do with my friend Wade, and we talk a lot about business and a lot about being a professional photographer on there. But just for this episode, I wanna hit on what that might mean because it really can mean anything. Um, you know, the term professional just basically indicates that you know some portion of income that you probably get taxed on by the government at the end of the year is made with your camera, shooting pictures, whether that is selling your pictures in a fine art kind of way, or whether that's doing commercial work for a client kind of situation, or whether that's shooting weddings, or whether that's shooting product, or whatever that is. And you know, there still is work to be found, and it's changed a lot, <clears throat> but what also I think is interesting is there was a statement that was made in the news recently that you guys may have caught. A couple months, maybe about a month ago, uh, Flickr had a big redesign and it was long overdue, uh, beautifully done. There was some controversy because it was very different than what they had before. And that's not the subject I'm going for. But around that time, uh, Marissa Mayer, who is the CEO now of Yahoo, um, who owns Flickr, had made an announcement in the press that it was answering a question the reporter had asked her. And I think in some ways she probably was caught off guard somewhat. But anyway, it went like this. For years, if you have been on Flickr before, in the old days, they had what was called a pro account. And basically all that meant was it was the paid account where you had some more features than just the basic sign up for free account. And one of the designations is that you, they put the word pro next to your username to indicate that you had a pro account. It did not mean you were a professional photographer. In fact, I think most people on Flickr got that and never associated with it. And 
I'm not sure maybe Marissa understood that, which is kind of unfortunate too. But anyway, the question was asked of her um, that why they decided to change the business model and get rid of the pro accounts. And unfortunately, her response was that there's no really such thing as a pro photographer anymore, that there are no professional photographers anymore. So they were making this change. And I just read that and I thought, God, ouch. And I, I kind of feel bad for her because I think the question may have caught her off guard. I don't think she understood what it was. And I think that statement was really... Uh, very uninformed and extremely naive in a lot of ways because I know a lot of people who are doing it and it is not an easy industry to be in. Most people work for themselves. There's not a lot of like full-time employment jobs. There are few. We'll talk about them. Um, but you know, normally it's not like you work for a company and you have benefits and you know, you get a paycheck. It's working for yourself and you have to invoice your clients and you're responsible for your own insurance and all those things. And it just kind of I think came off as a little bit of an insult to some photographers because I read a lot of negative reactions about that too. But if we define being a professional photographer, and forget what Marissa says, um, if you define being a professional photographer is some of your income comes from photography. And what I've always <laughs> thought was odd too was there's always some kind of prestige that comes with saying that, yes, I'm a professional photographer. And sometimes it has a little bit of a snooty connotation to it. There's definitely a, um, you know, this pretentious prestige that comes with it. And it really isn't. I mean, honestly, I've gone through periods of my life where I've made money from photography and periods where I just did it for myself and I did it for my own personal gain. And I'll be honest, I felt more prestigious about the times I wasn't making any money about it. And the reason was, is because I was able to shoot what I wanted to shoot. And I think that's really important and that's a really important takeaway here. So I guess all this is just to say that, that you know, this being a professional photographer, it, it, it's, it's the right thing to do if you know you want to do that. And if you feel like you have to do that and you feel like that's really part of you and you feel like you're going to draw satisfaction and happiness from that. Having said that, there, you know, the scope of being a professional photographer is so broad and so wide. And like I said, this can mean a lot of things. Maybe this means you sell prints. Maybe this means that you know you shoot weddings maybe this means you're a fine art photographer maybe this means that you do stock photography and those are all very different occupations under this umbrella of being a pro photographer and so what i want to do today is i want to look at some websites um, i would be willing to bet that most people out there have not updated their website in a while and that goes for me too and that's a project that i want to do this summer and so some of this i'll talk about and I'll be able to show you and work through too as we go along and we'll look at some examples but today i want to look at some examples of some websites that i think are particularly good and i want to look at the range of work people are doing and what your website tells the world that you do and and what that indicates about you and hopefully you'll see some cool work that's inspiring too today and that's another big intention of this so come on over to the computer and we're going to get online and have a look Okay, so we are going to look at some photography websites of various professional photographers. And what I've done today is I've picked a pretty wide range of stuff to cover. And this is a pretty wide range of photographers. And I will be the first to admit that some of these people I know personally. And I that's not why they're in here. I really, really respect their work. And I think they're doing something right on their websites. So all these photography websites are great examples. Um, I'm not wanting to show you so much the greatness of their website so much. I mean, all these are wonderful. But in terms of being a professional photographer, what is it that they're communicating with their website? So what are they showing and what are they indicating? Um, and why does this work? Does it give a good clue of who they are and what they do? And, you know, we'll, we'll take it from there. Uh, the first example I want to look at, um, this is a guy named Wade Griffith that um, I do another podcast with called The Photography Show that you can look up in iTunes. Um, Wade is a very good friend of mine. Um, he is an excellent photographer. No question about it. And Wade Wade has carved a niche. Um, he does a lot of professional work these days, but he has carved a really wonderful niche of architectural photography and portraits. And I love the fact that his website starts out giving you both those things. Um, the pictures are big. Um, you know, we're just sitting here talking and he's got a slideshow that it defaults to. And you get a really good sense that this guy has his stuff together and he can shoot. Um, he has this wonderful sense of symmetry when he does architectural work. Um, and that shows through in the photos. It's very clean. There's not a lot 
uh, text on here. Um, he doesn't really need it. He needs to show his photos because if you are an architectural firm or you have a building you're very proud of or you have that kind of a need for, for a photographer, this is the guy you want to hire professionally. Um, certainly his portfolio comes up first. Um, you can go look at hotel shots if you want. Um, he has this so you can skip through them if you want. You can look at thumbnails or you can autoplay them. And if you were interested in architectural photography, there's no BS here. I mean, Wade is really being very clear about that. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, that's just a very clean, nicely done website. And of course, I'm a dear friend of Wade's, but um, I think he does this really well. And I certainly would not have showed this otherwise. Um, a couple other people. This is another guy that I've known for years. This is a gentleman named Keith Wood, who is a good friend of mine. He is a photographer out of Portland, Oregon, and he has done, he's had a very long career, um, probably 30, 40 years of doing commercial work. Um, huge clients like Exxon. Um, I'll show you his portfolio here. Um, he does a lot of cultural work for big oil companies. Um, he does some sculpture. He has some personal work in here, um, but you, you can get a sense that, you know, if you need a location guy that's going to go overseas and shoot in Africa, I mean, he certainly has done this well. And, you know, the other thing I really like about what Keith does is there's a lot of text on here to talk about some of these images. And I think that's because there's sometimes some context behind them that does need to be described. And he talks about the job he did. He talk about, he'll talk about, uh, you know, what the subject of the photo was. The other thing I really like about Keith's website is he has this wonderful, um, it's, it's sort of a blog. I mean, I guess it is a blog for all intents and purposes, but he puts his own work up and then talks about it, which is something that I think photographers need to learn how to do more. It's not extensive. It's just sometimes a paragraph or a couple sentences, but he just explains what's going on in the photo. His work is brilliant and it does speak for itself, but because Keith is, Oh, in a lot of ways, a street photographer in essence, even with the corporate clients that he does with a lot of uh, with a lot of the uh, the um, foreign country travel that he does. Um, sometimes there is some story behind it, uh, much in the sense of a National Geographic kind of thing. And so I think Keith does that really well. And so, you know, this is a great website for not only seeing great work, but getting under the hood a little bit and learning more about Keith. And I think that is a really important thing. On the complete other end of the spectrum, I want to talk about um, my buddy Joe Bud, and Joe is actually a neighbor of mine that I met last year. Um, we met up on the roof of our loft building watching fireworks, and Joe's a really good guy. We've become very good friends. And what is fascinating about Joe, other than he's a really nice guy, but he has carved a niche as a professional by shooting strictly mineral photography. He calls it shooting rocks. And this is his website. It's joebudphotography.com. And uh, I'll put all the links to these in the show notes. So if you're watching them on the website, just look below the video and you can you can go check these out on your own. But what I think this is, this is really interesting because this is what I'm talking about with, with in terms of careers changing. You know, you look at a guy like Keith, who's been around for years and years and has enormous reputation and enormous amount of context in various businesses and if you need somebody to go out and shoot an oil rig or roughnecks or drums or whatever he's your guy and this is a harder business for newer people to break into just because um, you know, uh, this guy's been around and he's got these connections however you take somebody like Joe who's a lot younger and is a little more new at his career and he's carved what you know you call a niche and a niche is simply you know, you've come up with something very specific that you specialize in. In this case, it's rock. So his clients consists of a lot of museums. Um, they consist of people who collect rocks. And believe it or not, there's a lot of wealthy collectors out there that deal with minerals. Um, they're very proud of what they've got. They deal these things all the time. They're always buying and selling. And there is an avenue to hire a photographer who knows what they're doing in there. I remember when Joe first told me about this, and I'm like, you shoot rocks, huh? And so, you know, they're minerals. But you look at these and he's got a great eye. I mean, a lot of these, they're, they're minerals, but it's, it's macro photography. It has to be specially lit. Um, the color accuracy is completely important with this because a lot of times um, they'll end up using these in catalogs or places where they're, they're actually buying, selling, and trading um, minerals. And so the color correction is very important on these. And Joe is a very meticulous person, and I think he shoots these extremely well. And he's got a beautiful website. Um, a couple things that are interesting about this is, you know, you can certainly go in and if you, you know, um, deal with quartz a lot, you can, you know, dial right over to that section. But upon the top here, just as far as his navigation goes, um, I, I think his website is well done in this way because it the, his audience is not other photographers necessarily. It's the clients and the potential clients. So, you know, you've got your home tab and he's got published images in here. And this is interesting. And you do see photographers do this a lot. 
where they'll go ahead and do tear sheets, magazine covers. And what he is, is he's showing two things here. One, he's showing his work in context of where it was used in the end. And two, he's also, in a very subtle way, showing who he's worked for in some of the, the bigger magazines. Now, you and I may not have heard of a lot of these, but if you're in the rock and gem industry, you probably have. And uh, he's done an enormous amount of work and had a good success with this. Um, and I think his website is great. I think it shows that. It's very clean. It doesn't try to be anything more than this. One thing I like that Joe doesn't put a lot of personal work on here he keeps it very straightforward to what he can do and and what he's out there to you know be a professional with and make money at um, I think he's extremely good um, let's go to another end of the spectrum here this is a gentleman named Tyler Sharp who I've met recently because we did an interview with him on the other podcast um, Tyler is amazing um, he shoots a lot of he has a very eclectic career in a lot of ways. Very beautiful website. I love the way the thumbnails are laid out in this kind of grid-like format. And he shoots great work. Um, you click on the image, it gets big. And he's done a wonderful selection of <clears throat> just narrowing it down to his best stuff. Uh, sometimes he'll have two shots on a page, which is kind of interesting if they're things that go together. Um, other times it's just one. Um, and it's very well done. The other thing I like about Tyler is he is kind of a little bit of an eclectic guy in the sense that he shoots photos, but he also is a writer and he does some video work. And so he's done some documentaries that you can see on here. Um, you can go in and look at his video reel. And he's got some really, really beautiful work on there. And he also has these writing with short stories. Now, we will come back around to this later when we start talking about building websites in another episode. But one thing that's really important is that I think more photographers need to learn how to write about their own work. This is something that a lot of people do not understand. And unfortunately, the world of the internet to a lot of people out there is Google. And Google is not going to index your images based on content necessarily. Now, there's technology in place that's changing this, but you do need to learn how to write and describe your work if you're interested in search traffic. And I think that Tyler does this really, really well. Um, He's an amazing guy, amazing photographer. He's got a very eclectic client list. His website reflects that. And he has a wide range of work that he does and a lot of variety. It's very different than somebody like Joe Budd who specializes in something that's very um, niche in a lot of ways. So anyway, wonderful stuff. Um, another gentleman I will show you the work of is this is Kevin Meredith, who I have met on a couple occasions just online. Uh, Kevin's an amazing photographer. Um, he is known as Lomo Kev on Flickr, and he is one of the more popular guys on Flickr and has been for years and Kevin is his vocation on here or how he makes his living is he deals in teaching and authoring books and so his photography website is going to be a lot different he of course has his portfolio on here so you can go in he shoots largely with a Lomo LCA camera and has done some wonderful work again look describing his photos he knows how to write about his work and shows big large beautiful colored photos on here and uh this is one of my favorites this is actually imaging cunningham riding a bike um who's a friend of his and uh anyway so it, it, a wonderful retro style photographer who brings in a lot of this old school vibe to a lot of his shots um you know you see this kind of world of Bresson and Robert Frank that is influenced, but he doesn't look like those guys, but that, that is definitely maybe something behind his work. And, and he puts wonderful stuff in here. And this is really just his best work. If you want to go see everything, you can go to Flickr, but he does a great job of dialing this down into things that really work well. And he knows how to write about it. So anyway, um, and also he does have information on here. Go back up to the top of workshops that he does for the Hotshots photography course um, that he teaches and then also his book projects, which um, he's an amazing guy and he's done some amazing work. He's a really nice guy, too, and I'd love to meet him in person one day. We've only met online a few times, but uh, very nice gentleman. So another guy that I want to show you who I think this is a complete opposite end of the spectrum here is Abelardo Morel. And, and Morel is a fine art photographer. Um, that is what he does. He does not do commercial work in that sense. He sells prints in major galleries. And he is one of the top photographers in the world these days. And I, if you watch this show, you know I'm a huge fan of his work. I just, yeah, he's one of the best. And he does a lot of work with Camera Obscura. And what you're looking at in this photo right here, and I love how this is the first image on here because it's very compelling. If you don't understand what's going on, he will get a hotel room across the street from whatever scene he's quote unquote photographing cover the windows in hefty bags black out the room cut a small quarter sized hole in it and what you get is a camera obscura which works just like a pinhole camera so the image is actually projected onto the wall 
behind the room. And so then he will photograph the room with this image being projected. And he does absolutely disgustingly wonderful work to the point where you just can't stand it because he is so good. Um, and his portfolio is very well organized into little niches that he does very well. Um, he's got enough text on here with upcoming events, upcoming work, retrospectives, things like that shows that he's doing. And, you know, here's a whole thing on on money that he's he's done. Here's a whole gallery on various still lifes with money. And I think it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, very creative mind. Um, very interesting photography. He does a lot of wonderful stuff. Um, I just really can't say enough good things about him. But what I like, and he just recently redesigned this website, is that he keeps this very straightforward. If you need to know what the publications are, what books are being published, want to read the blog, look at the photography. It's very well laid out. I mean, this... I'm not sure it feels like WordPress, what he's using, and we'll get into that more specifically when we talk about websites. Um, this is a new thing he's working on with images. He's making, he's calling this the tent camera. And so they're camera obscuras, but he shoots them on the wall of a tent that he carries around. And so the idea of the tent is you don't have to have a hotel room somewhere. You can pretty much pick this up and set it anywhere. And uh, you end up getting the texture and the pattern of whatever the tent material is made of. This one's actually made on the, on the ground. Um, so anyway, it creates a really interesting canvas. And like I said, Morel is really pushing the boundaries of, of fine art and what can be done. And I think he's extremely unusual that he does this better than no one else. And uh, beautiful work. Once again, I'm going to put all the links to these in the show notes and you can go check them out. And the intent here was not just to fumble through some photography websites, but I wanted to show you some specific people who are all working in various different things. Abelardo Morel is a fine art photographer. We looked at Joe Budd, who does mineral work, very strict niche. Uh, Keith Wood, who does a lot of travel work, a lot of corporate work, um, kind of more old school. Um, we've also looked at Tyler Sharp, who is amazing. Um, does more editorial kinds of stuff, but is very modern the way he does it. We looked at Wade Griffith, who does a lot of beautiful architectural work. And finally, Kevin Meredith, who is an author and a teacher for a vocation and how his website is a little bit different as well. So anyway, all this to say is I think this is really important when you go look at stuff and it's really important to find out what it is you want to focus on as a photographer, no pun intended, and what it is that you are doing that makes you a professional and what it is that you want to communicate through your website. Many of you probably already have websites. I know I do and I bet that many of them probably need to be updated and I know mine does. And so we'll talk more about this in future episodes, but this is what I'm trying to get across today. And this is what I want you guys to start thinking about and just, you know, looking at the breadth of what can be done, whether or not you like the aesthetics or the design of these websites is past the point. In fact, you'll notice they do run the gamut. Some of them are um, very, you know, eloquently designed and some of them are a little more utilitarian. But the point is, is design aside, are you communicating your photos in the way that you want to communicate yourself as a photographer? Okay, so we've looked at a pretty wide scope of different photographers online and what they do. And, and you know, this whole concept of what it means to be a pro and a professional. And I want to revisit this. And I want you guys to think about what that means to you. And the reason I say this is because I really did get a lot of questions of people who are interested in what they need to be putting together in their portfolio and how to select their own work. And in coming episodes, what we're going to do is I want to revisit this and I want to get more in depth than I have in the past about it. Um, you know, we've done episodes on this before. And I want to try and take them to the next level and dig a little deeper and maybe give you guys some more assignment based things and takeaways you can do, um, you know, from watching the show. So anyway, um, all that will be to come. And thanks again for watching. Once again, guys, this has been The Art of Photography, and I will see you next time. Take care.